it isn't always practical to stage the real event you want to show. Since Hollywood's earliest days, filmmakers have created the illusion of reality by the use of special effects. It's just three years today since they put our dear son in jail for stealing them our bonds. And I know he never stole them. Sure he never stole them. Our Chester never stole nothing from nobody. Hardly ever. Do you think he'll come ahead and for home when they turn him loose from that plague of jail? I reckon gas and calculate he will, Ma. <coughs> oh. It ain't a big night out, a man of peace. show you how to create some very special effects yourself. Timing is of the essence. Like, if you're going to dump a barrel of water on somebody, the right guy better be at the right place at the right time. In the mood for a storm? We'll start with some fans. Hollywood calls them wind machines, but between us, they're just fans. You can hook dark wires to branches to give them that extra shake and sway. Flash bulbs fired in sequence just off camera create a lightning effect. A simple nail board makes a good firing device. Let's say it's the middle of July and you feel like a good blizzard. No problem. Plastic snow and a couple of wind machines easily create the illusion. Stones a good ground cover. You can save time and money by first spreading out white muslin sheets. Then you don't need nearly so much limestone. Cotton's useful to simulate patches of snow. Lightweight pearl-like plastic flakes stick to vertical surfaces once they've been sprinkled with water. Got any stale beer hanging around the house? Don't spill it out. And hey, don't, don't drink it either. Mixed with Epsom salts, it's great for frosting glass. We're looking at foam, cotton, muslin, ground asbestos, limestone, and perlite. With some imagination and lots of work, you might come up with something like this. Many ways to simulate fog. If you want to be cool about it, use dry ice. Wrap it in cheesecloth and immerse it in hot water. Because it's cold, the fog hangs low to the ground. Dry ice vapor displaces oxygen. So if you're using it in an enclosed place, you certainly have made out your will. 
Another way of simulating fog uses an insecticide gun that vaporizes crystal oil. Again, if you want the fog to stay close to the ground, cool it with dry ice. The earliest device used to produce fog or smoke is the bee smoker. It's filled with charcoal, then primed with starter fluid. such as gum olibanum, is added. And once it ignites, you're really smoking. The aerodyne fog maker is another kind of insecticide gun. Out of the fog walks the strange. The guy is a crack shot, especially with a little help from his friends. Raking the nail board sets off small explosive charges embedded in the targets. Stick-on bullet hits are filmed with a tied-down camera. The special effects man's intervention is later edited out. The bullet hits are simply plastic discs with darkened centers. They're stuck to the windshield with Vaseline. Another way of simulating bullet hits is to fill horse capsules with Vaseline, aluminum powder, and black plastiline. The capsules shatter on impact. Packing the capsules with Fuller's Earth and plastiline provides still another kind of bullet hit. And if that's not enough, lacquering the capsules seals and hardens the shells so they can be fired from repeating air guns. just isn't a western without Indians, bows and arrows. And flaming arrows are even better. Here the arrows are shot not from bows, but in a series from air valve blowguns. Our human pincushion is protected with steel back pads for arrows, spears and knives. They're guided by thin dark wires. There's simply no room for error with an effect such as this. Most of the tools we've used so far are simple enough, almost ordinary. The effects they've produced, though, are genuinely exciting. But no adventure movie is complete without a raging fire, a full-fledged holocaust, a blaze that devastates the town, ravages the city, or as in our case, 
merely destroys the old family farm. Celotex is cut to a convenient shape, then soaked in boiling paraffin. This way, the Celotex can flame for 20 minutes or so without really burning the structure. Our effects man is notching the Celotex, not to keep a proud record of how many fires he started, but to speed combustion and produce a brighter, faster burning flame. To get the fire started real good, <laughs> slosh the Celotex with a mixture of gasoline kerosene and rubber cement. You could add toothpaste, marmalade, and seawater, but it wouldn't do any good, so we don't recommend it. <laughs> Butane gas creates more spectacular effects. Prime the jets before turning on the gas, or you may become part of the effect yourself. itself is only lightly charred, but fire is fire is fire is fire, and every precautionary measure should be taken. Whenever you work with any special effect, always be careful, and always make sure you know what you're doing. 